Tonight's going to be a little bit different, whereas I, usually I read a verse and preach a little bit, read a verse and preach a little bit. Tonight, I'm going to read the whole thing and then preach. So, because there's 53 verses, there's a, quite a few. We're going to cover this whole chapter tonight. Y'all ready? <laughs> John chapter number 7. Verse number 1. <clears throat> After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Imagine that for just a minute. I know I said I wasn't going to preach a little bit, but I can't help it. <laughs> Look at where you're at. Jesus has just fed 5,000 people. Jesus has healed a blind man. Jesus has healed a crippled man. Jesus has walked on water. Jesus has allowed Peter to walk on water. Jesus has just preached an awesome message and... and now his brethren, that's his disciples. That's the people that were following him. And his brothers, we're going to get into that in just a minute, his own family didn't want to follow him. Didn't want to have anything to do with Jesus. Verse 6, Then said Jesus unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast, I go not up ye yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. Now, the tradition for the Jewish people was, I'm giving you some background before we get into the message. The, the, the tradition of the Jewish people were to have a feast of the tabernacles. You know what Jesus did not follow while he was on this earth? Tradition. We've learned this all through the book of John so far. Anything to do with tradition, Jesus had no part in it. Jews did not talk to Samaritans. And what did Jesus do? He sat on the well and talked to a Samaritan. Much less, not just Samaritans, but a Samaritan woman. Jesus sat on a well and talked to a Samaritan woman. Uh, Jews wouldn't be caught dead talking to another woman, much less a Samaritan woman. We talked a little bit about that a few weeks ago when we talked about racism and all that stuff. I'm glad Jesus loves us, don't matter who you are. No matter where you come from, no matter what color you are, Jesus loves you and He'll break the traditions of man and come and talk to you no matter who you are. I'm glad when we talked about last week or two weeks ago when we talked about when He healed that crippled man. We remember what day He did it on? He did it on the Sabbath day. Jewish tradition says you don't do anything on the Sabbath day. You sit at home after worship and you don't do a single thing. You don't run your ox. You don't go to the store. You don't buy groceries. You don't cut the grass. You don't do anything according to Jews on the Sabbath day. You know what Jesus did? He was out doing the work of the Lord on the Sabbath day. Jesus Christ was not bound by the traditions of man. Okay? So he wasn't getting ready to go to this feast just because they come up to him and said, Hey, you need to go to this feast. Jesus wasn't, he wasn't going to just do whatever you told him to do. Jesus was going to do what he needed to do in the right time to do it. He didn't care what the tradition was. He didn't care what the time frame was. Jesus said, I'm going to do it my way, and everybody else is just going to get over it. That's the way Jesus did it. Verse number 10. But when his brethren were gone up, they went, he also, up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, He is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit, no man spake only of him for fear of the Jews. So now you've got these people that are now, what did we say that word murmuring was? We learned it last week. Mumbling under their breath. Talking behind his back. Whispering. This guy's crazy. What are we going to do to get him out of here? That's what they were doing. Talking about Jesus. They're conspiring to kill him. They're ready to murder him. As, as you learned in verse number 1. It's amazing to me, last chapter, what happened? They were ready to crown him king. And here we are one chapter later and they're ready to kill him because he's come to take over. They don't like that. They don't like the fact that Jesus has come to take over. Like I've been saying over the past few weeks because it's in the text every single time that we've done these verse by verses, somebody comes in and tries to take over, that means you have to step out of the way and that's why a lot of people don't like that. 
They don't want to have to set their opinions and their thoughts aside. They'd rather say, it's my way or the highway. Jesus, he said, it's his way or the highway. Okay? He came in to take over. And when he comes into our hearts, when he comes into our lives, he doesn't give us options. It's not, you do this if you want to. It's, we're going to clean this thing out. You're going to get right with me. Or we're going to drag you through the fire. Amen? Amen. That's the way Jesus is. All right, verse number 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knowest this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. That word doctrine there simply means what he believed, what he was preaching, what he was teaching. As we did uh, Wednesday nights, my first, what, five or six Wednesday nights here, we did a whole study for a whole month and a half on doctrine and what we believe as a Baptist church. And our doctrine does not come from me. Our doctrine does not come from the deacons. Our doctrine does not come from grandma and grandpa. The doctrine comes from the word of God. Amen. And Jesus said, my doctrine comes from God the Father who sent him. Amen. Verse number um, 18. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law and yet none of you keepeth the law? <laughs> Why go ye about to kill me? Could you imagine being there? Just like last week. They said, they said Moses sent manna from heaven. And Jesus said, yeah, it only fed them for a little while. And then spiritually they would have died and went to hell. We talked about that last week. But you know what? He said, Moses gave you the law. The Jews always went back to, back to the Old Testament. They still do to this day. If you debate with a Jewish person, they're never going to bring up the New Testament. And Jesus knew exactly how to get to them. He said, hey, the law Moses gave you, ain't not a one of you able to keep it. Could you imagine the look on their faces? You think that made them happy? You think they're already angry with him because he's breaking all their rules of tradition. And now he tells them, the law, you can't follow it. These guys that have been in the church all these years that, that know the Old Testament back and forth and they're trying to live everything that they can and Jesus tells them, talking about leaders in the church, you can't follow the law? That made them mad. That made them angry. Verse number 20. The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil. <laughs> Who goeth about to kill thee? And you know what their response to Jesus was after he said, You can't keep the law? The law that you've been preaching, you can't keep it? They said, You're full of the devil. They told Jesus that. Could you imagine telling Jesus, the Son of God in the flesh, that he's full of the devil? I couldn't imagine that. Mm -mm. Why did they do that? Out of anger. Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision. Talked a little bit about that last week. Not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me, because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. That means that we are commanded to judge, by the way. Side note, because it's in the text. Before we get into the actual message, giving you background, we are commanded to judge righteous judgment. When you look at a situation, you've got to make a decision. You've got to decide whether it's right or whether it's wrong. And oftentimes, when you see somebody doing something, it's not necessarily in what you just see. There's a lot more to the story than what your eyes behold or something that your ears hear. Now, you've got to get all the facts. But by the way, it does not say thou shalt not judge there. What And I taught on judging one Wednesday night. It's been a while back. But it, what it's saying is we're, we're not not to judge, but we're to make righteous judgment. What's that word judgment mean? The definition is to form an opinion. Everybody does it. We all do it. Yeah. Everybody says, don't judge me. It's not your job to judge me. It's only God's job to judge me. How many people have you heard that say that? Yeah. I mean, don't raise your hand, but how many of y'all have said that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not true. It's not only God's job. Jesus just said make righteous judgment. Decide for yourself what's right or wrong. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Okay? Verse number um, 20, 20, 25. Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he? Y'all see there's so much preaching in this. It's so hard for me not to stop and preach for a few minutes. Then before we get into the actual gist of the whole context of the text. Verse 25. Then said of the, uh, some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly. <laughs> Jesus wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid. He'd speak out. He was loud. 
He was proud. He would tell them, it's going to be this way or you're going to get over it. And they all they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers now indeed know indeed that this is the very Christ? Howbeit we know this man from whence he is. But when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he talked, saying, You both know me, and you know whence I am. And I have not come to myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. He's saying right there once again, for like the millionth time so far out of seven chapters in the book of John, that God the Father sent him. He's saying, I'm God. I'm the same. I'm the same. God in the flesh. Making them even more angry. Because now they see in him as blaspheming and, and saying that he's God. Like I said last week, if I come before you and I told you I was God, eat my flesh and drink my blood, what would you say? He's a lunatic. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ said in chapter number 6. He said, I am God. You will eat my, eat my flesh and you will drink my blood. He wasn't talking about physically. He was talking about bread and wine and juice and all that good stuff that we talked about last week. But when somebody comes before you and says that they're God, you think they're a lunatic. And yet, we blame the Jews and we say, oh, they're so stubborn. They're so st We're just as stubborn as they are. Amen. Sometimes we don't even trust in, in the Almighty God. Amen? we got Him sitting right in front of us. He comes and sits in, the, in our presence like He did this morning. And some of us don't even see it. Don't even feel it. Don't even know He's here. God right in front of you. Verse number 26, or 20, where would we stop at? 30. Then they sought to take Him, but no man laid hands on Him because His hour was not yet come. I love that. I could preach for an hour on that verse right there. The fact that God is in full control. They were ready to come after Him right then because He was saying that He was God. But they couldn't because it wasn't time for Him to die. Let me tell you something, friend. If you're going to die today, we're just going to go ahead and preach a little bit. If you're going to die today, it's going to be because God wants you dead. Right. If you die tomorrow, it's going to be because God said you're going to die. Amen. Ain't nothing <laughs> in this world going to touch you unless God says so. Right. Nothing, right. amen. That includes Satan. If you're a saved child of God, ain't nothing going to take you out of this world until God says so. Amen. You can right. get shot up. You can get COVID, you can get this, you can get that, but ain't nothing going to happen to you until God takes you out of here. Amen. Amen. We should not fear sickness and we should not fear death. Right. That's because right. the Christian has overcome all those things anyway. Right. And if we do die tonight, whether it be from COVID or whether it be from getting shot to death or stabbed to death or however else you want to die, if you want to die from drowning or if you want to burn to death, you know what? The worst thing that can happen to you is you'll spend the rest of eternity from that moment on with your Savior. Amen. 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 Let it come. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Bring it on. Amen. I'm ready. Preach it. You can have this old world as we sung practicing during the choir. I love that song. But just give me Jesus. Right. Give me heaven. I'll take it any day. Verse number 31. Many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. So now people are actually believing what this guy's preaching. It was all right as long as he was just screaming and nobody was believing it. And now it's starting to change hearts. People are starting to see that Christ, he's the Christ. He's Jesus. He's God in the flesh. They're starting to see that it's a prophecy coming alive. And now the Pharisees are angry because that means he's coming to take over once again. Verse number 33. Uh, then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I am with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Notice what this is. This is a back and forth. This whole chapter of chapter number 7 has been a back and forth between Jesus and the church leaders. Jesus is telling them the truth, and they're constantly saying, You're crazy. Jesus is telling them the truth and they're getting angrier and angrier and angrier and angrier. We're going somewhere with this. Verse number um, 30, 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go into the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this that he said, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. In the last days... That, the, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. I'm thankful for that day that I got a drink of that living water. Amen. Verse number 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said out of his belly, shall flow rivers of living water. 
But this spake he of the Spirit, which they believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, This is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the Scripture said that Christ cometh out of the seed of David, and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. Some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers of the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Had, have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus saith unto them, Y'all remember what happened to Nicodemus in chapter number 3. He that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, doth our law judge any man before it hear him, and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for our out of Galilee ariseth no prophet, no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. Could you imagine being preached to by Jesus Christ himself? <laughs> and turning and walking away and going back home the same way you came. This wasn't C.T. Townsend. This wasn't Barry Spears. This wasn't Billy Sunday. This wasn't Billy Graham. This was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God in the flesh standing here before these men. Preaching the truth. Telling them that the only way to heaven is through Him. Through His blood. Through His sacrifice. Through the cross. Because everyone must cross that way in order to get to heaven. And every one of them walked away and said, I'll have none of it. Let me give you one, a few more verses. Y'all turn over to... Um, um, let's see where it's at. I'll read them to you. John 3, 19 through 20. Y'all can write them down if you want to. I'm just going to read it. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. That tells us why. Jesus Christ is the light, Correct? Why don't they want to receive the light? Because they like the darkness. They like the evils of this world. They're caught up in it. They can't get rid of it. They don't want to get rid of it. Let me ask you this. When you were out living in sin, did you ever want to quit? Obviously not, because you kept on sinning. Still to this day, we have certain things that we struggle with. All of us. We have certain sins that we fight. We may want to give them up, and we may do our best to give them up, but there's times when we fall short. Not because we can't. Because we've got the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us. See, they didn't have that. They had Jesus standing before them. The Old Testament, they didn't even have that. The Old Testament, they had God the Father who walked by their side and talked to them. They couldn't see Him, but they could hear Him. And He would speak vocally. And now that Jesus Christ has came and died, we don't need the, the God the Father to speak to us vocally. And we don't need... Dreams, and we don't need visions like we talked about last week because we've got 66 books here that tell us everything that we need. Amen. It's perfect. It doesn't need anything. We can't go by our visions and our dreams because our dreams and our visions sometimes come from TV and not from the book. Amen? Amen. You ain't no telling what you could dream. And you'd say, oh, that come from God. Not always. Not all dreams come from God. Satan has the power to put dreams in <laughs> as well. When you fall into your dreams and you put that above the Word of God, then you fail. Where was I going with that? I don't know. Somebody needed to hear that. Amen. Talking about evil deeds. Man wants evil more than they want God. Why won't the world hear us when we tell them the truth? Why is it that when we go to work and we ask them if they want Jesus and they say, you're crazy, you're a lunatic, you belong in the crazy house because you go to church. You belong in the crazy house because you preach Jesus. You know what? I've told you before, I'm a Jesus freak and I'm proud of it. Amen. Hey, they call me what they want to call me. That's fine with me. But the reason they call us those things and the reason they don't want to hear the truth is because they like that evil. Man does not want to do good. Verse number 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. The only good that is in us does not come from us. It does not come from the preacher. It doesn't come from mama and papa. 
It doesn't come from grandma and grandpa. It comes from Him. The only good that is in us comes from the Holy Ghost. The world does not have that. They don't have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of them. So when they call you crazy, that's the reason why. They can't live like you do. They can't look at a situation and say, God's going to bring me through this because they don't even know who God is. Amen. How can you preach about a God that you've never met? How can you desire a God if you've never felt His love? The only reason we gave in to Him is because He met us right where we were at. And He said, hey, you're a sinner in need of a Savior. And in that moment, He opened up to our eyes. And our eyes got really bright. And we started seeing things spiritually because He came to us. No man can come to the Father unless he first be wooed. No man can come to Je through Jesus unless the Father or the Holy Ghost calls him first. Let's see. We've got... Um, I got so much to, to... John 15, 18 through 21. I'm just going to read this to you. This is Jesus talking in John 15, 18 through 21. We'll get to this in a couple months maybe. I don't know how long it will take us to get to chapter 15. But if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Jesus Christ said, you expect the world to love you when it hated me? You want to go to your family and tell them about Jesus and expect them to say, oh, what's so wonderful. You you believe in Jesus. You go to church. We're so proud of you. That ain't the way that works. You go to your family and tell them about Jesus and they say, you're a nut. Amen. You tell them, I'm not going to the family gathering because I, my, my, my calendar's set. Every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, yeah, I'm going to be in the house of God. Right. Because it's already set. That's right. You know what your family's going to say? Well, that's selfish. Because well, what crazy. about us? Right. Yep. I know. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I had to turn them away. Sometimes you got to do that with your family. Amen. Sometimes you got to put this foot down and say, hey, you're more than welcome to come to church with me, but I ain't missing church because of you. Right. Amen. That's right. A lot of people don't feel that way, but Jesus said that if you're going to love him, your love for everyone else ought to be like hatred. Over in the book of Matthew. Not saying that you should hate everyone. But saying that your love for him should be so strong. That you would give everything including your family up for him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus told his disciples take your cross and follow me. Some of our cross is that family that we keep mm -hmm. saying. Well if I show them love. If I go if I go, then they'll get saved. That ain't always the case. When you go to them instead of making them come with you to church. You're saying I'm willing to give up God for you. Right. Don't look at it that way do yeah. you? That's the way that it is. Mm -hmm. I would much rather have my family in the house of God than me missing the house of God to be with my family. Right. Right. My family knows that. Now, after years, and my family being saved, most of them understand that. Amen. But you know what? They didn't understand that at first. They didn't like that. Just like Jesus' brothers didn't like the fact that he was telling them the truth. He said his own brethren didn't want to have anything to do with him. That's what we're talking about tonight. You go out into the world... You preach the truth, they're going to hate you. You go to your family and preach the truth, they're going to hate you. They're not going to want to have anything to do with you unless you're living like they are and riding that fence and live, living a, a two-faced life. Right. Then they'll be ready to spend time with you. We ought not to do that. I've told you before there ought to be a distinct difference between a lost man and a saved man. Amen. If my family's smoking pot, I'm leaving. If my family's drinking alcohol, I'm leaving. My family's doing doing something they ought not to be doing. I'm leaving. I'm not going to have any part in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make sure that they understand the truth. And when you do that, you get hated. You go to work, and everybody else around you is talking, telling dirty jokes and doing all this, and you take part in it. You know what? You're saying, hey, I want to be like the world. Right. Why? Yep. Preaching to the choir, amen. I know we're faithful. But you know what? God knows what we're not. Right. Sometimes in our hearts, it's not right. And God knows that. I'll give you three quick things, real quick. And I want to preach on the thought. So you think you're better than Jesus? Take what we've, all this context of Scripture that we've just read and put it together. Jesus Christ talks about division. He talks about how we ought not to be around sin and the things of sin and the people that are living in sin. You say, Jesus hung out with sinners not because he liked their sin, but because he wanted to draw them to him. 
There's a big difference. And by the way, you're not Jesus. Jesus was perfect. Right. Yep. He was right. not going to sin. Yep. You'll fall into sin. If an old drunk goes and hangs out with a bunch of drinkers while they're drinking, you know what he's going to do? Drink. He's going to take a yeah. sip of that Bud Light. Right. Maybe not be proud of it, but you're going to. It's real <laughs> easy to do what sinners are doing if that's all you hang out with. It's real easy to do what Christians are doing when you come to church faithfully. Amen. It's real easy to come in these doors and raise your hands and shout, but then you go to work and you're ready to flip the, the whole desk over and you're ready to flip out on somebody because they're not doing their job and because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing and you get fussed at because of it and you get angry. It's real easy to, to act like the world then rather than act like the, just like it's easy to act like the church in here. It's real easy. So you think you're better than Jesus. Number one, you think that the world will love you even though it hated Jesus. Mm. We often think that. That's a tough one. We think that they're supposed to care about us, that they're supposed to embrace our beliefs. This coexists, hogwash stuff, where everybody's supposed to come together and Buddhists are supposed to meet with the Muslims. How can a Buddhist meet with a Muslim when the Muslim wants to slaughter them? It just don't make sense. It don't work. How can a Christian meet with a Muslim when a Muslim wants to say, it don't work? There's no coexisting. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, is what the Word of God says. Right, right. There's only one God. Amen, amen. And it is not Allah. Amen. It's not Muhammad. It's not Buddha. It's God the Father. It's amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit, three in one. Triune God. It's crazy how we think that everybody's going to love us. We think that if we live right and we stay away from sin, then everybody will just accept us for who we are. You try to go to go go somewhere with some work with some uh, people at work that are drinking and see how they react when you don't take their drink. Right. You think they're gonna take it lovingly? Most people are offended if you don't drink with them. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they think you're better. They you, they think you think you're better than them. Right. That's the truth. Study. Look at it. Look into the history of people going to parties and stuff like that. It's a lie from the devil. The world don't love you. The world don't want you. They don't want your Jesus. They don't want your Bible. They don't want your Bible thumping. They don't even want you to mention the name of Jesus. Amen. If they did, we'd be able to pray in the name of Jesus at a ball game. Amen. They're fine with you mentioning in the Father. They're fine with putting angels on television. They're fine with putting God on television. When you start putting the Lord Jesus Christ and the crucifix and, and actual preaching of the gospel saying that He was God, that's when they have their issues. They're not going to want it. They're not going to take it. They'll make fun of you. They'll call you names. They'll hurt your feelings. I know. I've been there. Let's take a trip out on the street tonight. And let's go street preaching and see if everybody embraces us. Yeah. Let's go see if everybody accepts what I say behind, behind here out there. Let's go, that's what Jesus did. Let's go out in front of Walmart and see if they don't kick us out for preaching the gospel. Let's see what happens. They can sell Girl Scout cookies. They can sell Boy Scout cookies. They can sell Transgender Scout cookies. But we, 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 can't, we can't preach the gospel. We can't give out gospel tracts. You go to the flea market, try to pass out gospel tracts and see what happens. Yep. See what happens. That's right. Ain't going to happen. <clears throat> They'll pretend to be your friend. They're really trying to drag you down, my friend. Yeah. They're going to th make you think that they care about your feelings. They're going to make you think that they love you, that they want to be around you. But the truth of the matter is they hate your Jesus whether they admit it or not. Amen. Amen. They hated the fact that he said he was God. People will hate you for the simple fact that you claim that Jesus Christ is God. People will try to debate you and make you want to test your faith. Man, people get on my nerves sometimes. My wife, pick on her for a minute. She she was, was it Friday we were talking? You was on, you saw that post on the news? There was a, um, I'm not saying that. What are you talking about? About the priest? Face beer. Well, that was Friday. I don't know what day it was, but the point is, yeah. I got you, I got okay, you. Okay, there okay. you go. Whatever day it was, she can't tell me. She's been aggravated because I don't know. her up. Okay? I have no idea. On Facebook, WBTV News brought out the fact that there was uh, a gay couple, two lesbians, that wanted to mm. baptize their baby in the Catholic Church. It wasn't gay. They weren't gay. They were unmarried. It was a husband. It was a man and woman. They were unmarried. They weren't wanting to baptize their infant. But the priest didn't want to baptize the infant because the I'm mom and dad were living in sin. I'm well, get your story right, I'm man. I'm trying. I'm preaching. That's not true. She says it wasn't, but it looked like two, two, two lesbians to me. So that's what I'm sticking with. Amen. Either way, whether they were married, whether they were straight, whether oh, they were lesbian, whether it does not. All that's irrelevant. The fact is that they were they were trying to get their infant baptized in the Catholic Church. Okay. 
And that caused a big havoc on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And my wife put on Facebook, she said, that babies can't get baptized because they don't know they're saved. You know what the first thing somebody put on there was? You must be a Baptist. You must be a Baptist. I'm glad they called it like it was. They knew exactly what we were. Amen. That's what I am. Do you know what? The whole time people were just fussing and arguing and calling her hateful. And she said, oh, you, you could trust in Jesus today. And they were being hateful and, and just being mean to her. And I told her, I said, that's why I don't even do, deal with Facebook. Because that's just, that's just a mess. And when you argue with people like that, you know what it is? You're just going to get more angry <laughs> and more agitated because yep. you're going to give them the gospel and until the Holy Ghost convicts their heart, they're not going to take it. That's right. They're not going to listen to it. That's right. But if you, they'll try to get you to bait. They'll try to get you to doubt your faith. They hated Jesus and Jesus said they'll hate you because they hated him first. Don't get comfortable, friend, with your worldly friends. Right. Because the closer you get to God, the more they're going to hate you. The more different you become from them, the more they're going to hate you. Number two, you think you're better than Jesus because you think they long to be like you even though they hurried to hang him. Right. You, long, you think they long to be like you even though they hurried to hang him. Oftentimes we have this idea that we can make a huge impact on the world. And I believe in certain situations, we can. I, I believe that, and I've preached it, soul winning. Teaching people about Jesus is important. Debating with people about Jesus is a different story. I'm not going to sit there and argue with somebody that doesn't want to listen. It's a waste of my time. They don't want to hear it. I'm not going to waste my time. I'll give them a gospel track and go on about my business. Amen. Because if they're arguing with you, that means that the Holy Ghost has not convicted their heart yet. You can't be saved until the Lord first calls you right. and woos you. Remember the, what we just read. That's in the context of this scripture. But we have this idea that we think that because we live right, everybody else around us is going to respect us and live right too. Mm -hmm. But that ain't the way it works. No. You can go around and zip your mouth while everybody else is cussing. It ain't going to stop them. I will tell you this story. I was at work. I think I've told you all this before. I was working at NVR. And the big head honcho boss man that was giving me my interview and giving me my orientation, it was F this and GD that and F this and GD that. And he asked me, out of, after he was giving me, this is all during orientation, and after he got done with that, he asked me, he said, well, what do you like to do? I looked at him, I said, I like to preach. I like to preach. Then, he shut up. Then hear another cuss word come out of his mouth. He talked about how good God was. He talked about how he loved the Lord. He talked about how wonderful God is. For the rest of the time, anytime we got together, he told me how much he tithed. He told me how, how oh much he was my. giving to his church and how the millions of dime like, dude, Lord, help you. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. They're not going to, you know the truth. They may hide it. And they may not cuss around you. But as soon as they leave your presence, they're going to go right back to that mess that they were doing. Amen. And I promise you, it's not going to last long. They'll respect you for a little while, but then they're going to go right back to what they were doing. Because mm -hmm. why? Not because they hate you. Oftentimes we feel like it's our fault. We feel like it's our fault if we push and push and push. But Jesus pushed and pushed and pushed, as we just seen in chapter number 7, with no results. The Son of God preaches. And they don't respect Him. What makes you think they're going to respect us? That's right. They were ready to hang Him because of what He was preaching. Right. This world wants to hang us. They want to shut us up. They don't want our gospel. And they're not going to receive our gospel until God first opens their eyes. We'll learn a little bit more about those opened eyes and the calling of the Holy later in the book of John. But he was at the height of his popularity when he was healing people and feeding them. But as soon as he said that he came from heaven, that he was God, they were ready to crucify him. It's the same thing with us. You start preaching Jesus to your worldly friends, they're either going to leave you or they're going to drag you <laughs> down. One or the other. I say depart. The vision is important. It, I believe it was George Hutchinson that I put on Facebook two days ago that said that division is better than compromising in evil. Division is better than compromising in evil. I'd much rather divide myself than compromise. When it comes to this book, I'll divide myself and I'll separate before I compromise. Amen. When it comes to living for Jesus, I'll get rid of the people I will not compromise. When it comes to doing right, I'm going to do right. I'll get rid of people before I compromise the word of God, before I compromise my God. He comes first. Number three, and we're done. 
You think you're better than Jesus because you think they'll listen to your advice when they won't even hold honor, when they won't even honor him. We give the world somebody that's lost comes up to you and they say, Well, what do you think about this? And you tell them the truth, you think they're gonna listen to you? I'll tell you, many times I've had people at work when I was out in the workforce. They would come to me. They knew I was a preacher because I made it known. I wasn't ashamed of what I am. Yeah. I went to work. I carried my Bible. I carried gospel tracts. I listened to the, we had the radio at the restaurant that I worked at. It's gospel music that was on. It was well known who I was and what I believed and what I was. And they would come to me and they would seek my advice. And, and, and the first thing I'd always tell them is you got to make sure you're saved. My advice ain't going to do you no good if you're on your way to hell. You're not going to be able to fix those physical problems until you fix your spiritual problems. And when you tell them that, nine times out of ten, they don't want your advice and they run off. They'll come to you. I've had many uh, homosexuals come to me and ask me what I thought about it. And I've always said, my opinion does not matter. The only one that matters is the Word of God. I've had one get saved, but I've spoke to way more than one. Did have one get saved and turn. And he, as far as I know to this day, he's not involved in that lifestyle. He come to church. Got on the altar and repented and, and, and turned, from, turned from that lifestyle. I've lost contact with him, but the last I heard, he wasn't homosexual. And you have people like that that you're going to talk. And if that offends you because it's 2022, get mad at God. Don't get mad at me. I'm just preaching the book. Amen. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. If you don't like that, get over it. I understand the time that we live in. And I understand that people don't like that. Once again, I will not stray from the Word of God. I'm going to preach truth no matter who likes it or don't like it. They want, to tell, they want you to tell them that it's okay to live in sin because God loves them no matter what they do. That they're fine just the way that they are. The truth, though, is that we're all sinners bound for a place called hell unless we accept, accept the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's not a good person in here. The Bible says there's none righteous. No, not one. Doesn't matter who you are, you are not righteous. You think, and by the way, pride is a sin. When you think you're righteous, you think you're good. The only good that we have in us is through Him. That's it. Before I got saved, I was filthy. I was rotten. I was on my way to hell. Amen? Until He saved me. Until He called me. Until I received and accepted what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. That's it. Of course, as soon as you tell them that, they, they won't ask for your advice again. What in the world makes you think they're going to listen to your advice, even if you pull out the Word of God when they don't even believe it? I'm just giving you truth. I'm not trying to discourage you from witnessing. I'm trying to let you know they did the same thing to Jesus. I want us to understand it is our job to tell everybody. Not necessarily our job to argue with everybody and debate with everybody. But it is our job to tell them the truth. What they do with the truth, that's their business. Once I've told them the truth, their blood's off my hands, I'm good to go. If they die and go to hell, it's because they chose to, not because I didn't give them the gospel. It is our job to preach the truth. It is our job to compel them. Do, I mean, that word means do everything that it takes to get them to come into the house of God. Everything that it takes. If it means taking them out for a steak biscuit at Bojangles, do it. If it means putting $20 in their pocket for gas, do it. If it means going out and picking them up, do it. If it means talking to them for 20 minutes about Jesus, do it. But understand the difference between somebody that's just wasting your time and somebody that God's actually dealing with. Amen. I believe we waste a lot of time because we get too um, in tune with people rather than being in tune with God. That's right. There is a difference between somebody wanting the gospel Somebody trying to take advantage of you. We ought to do everything that we can to get people to Jesus. But we ought not to be like they are. A lot of people have this idea, and I'm done. I'm getting ready to close. A lot of people have this idea. In order to win somebody's heart, you've got to hang out with them for a little while. You can't just go up to them straight off and tell them about Jesus. You've got to win their heart. That's what they say. They say it's called lifestyle evangelism. I do believe in lifestyle evangelism. I believe your lifestyle can change somebody. I do believe that when they see you living right. What I don't believe is when you go to the bar with them, when you go watch a dirty movie with them, or when you go drink with them, or when you go smoke marijuana with them, or you go do this or go do that, knowing that God's against all that stuff, but yet you're still around it. That's not winning them to Jesus. That's them drawing you from Jesus. There is a difference. 
in closing, people believe this great idea that Jesus came to bring to bring peace on earth. And that He wants everyone to live in unity that coexists up and I was talking about in the beginning. Not to worry about what religion you believe because we all serve the same God just a different way. You know, they say, I heard one preacher say that uh, there's different ways traveling from one place to another going from somewhere to Jackson, Mississippi. And he said, in order to get to Jackson, Mississippi, I can take this road or I can take this road or I can go straight down the middle and get to Jackson, Mississippi. There's one problem with that theory. We're not going to Jackson, Mississippi. Amen. We're going to heaven. And there's only one way. And that's through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's Amen. Amen. There is nothing else. Amen. Jesus came to divide. He came to divide. He did not come to gather all religions together, to gather all churches together. That's why there's a division among the churches. There always has been. All the way, as we learned Wednesday night, we learned you got Ishmael, you got Isaac. All the way from the beginning of time, all the way in the book of Genesis, there was division. We talked about it a few weeks ago. God divided light from darkness when He created everything. There was division. He divided the water and the land. He divided the animals and the, the sea creatures. He's divided every. It's always been division. Not against races. That's where we mess up. Nowhere in the Word of God did He divide the races. They did that on their own. But when you divide your convictions, your standards, your religion, you stick with it. Don't you let somebody draw you away from here. Amen. Right. Don't compromise for anybody. He said you're either in or you're out. You're either mine or you're theirs. Jesus said you have to choose Him, choose him or the world. You ain't going to have both. Jesus said it. You couldn't have both. So what makes you think that we can? Jesus didn't want both. As we practiced. I'm glad. We should have sang that song tonight. We would have run right good with this, wouldn't we? You can have this old world. Just give me Jesus. Amen. Just like I said this morning. I come to get a hold of Jesus. That's where we're at tonight. Y'all stand up. <clears throat>